Hi everyone and welcome again to my YouTube channel BPM and Guru and welcome to another video where I'm hoping to answer questions that have been posed by you guys, my subscribers, through my YouTube channel on process modeling scenarios that you may be having a little bit of trouble with or something you'd like to know a little bit more about. So obviously these are processes using BPMN. So this question comes from Chris, who I believe is in California in the States. You'll have to forgive me, Chris, if I've got that wrong, but I'm just going from your uh, LinkedIn profile, even though you're educated in Cincinnati, I'm assuming from your job history that you're in California. So I haven't actually spoken to Chris yet about this scenario, but he did say briefly in a message that he was interested in how we manage the looping back from an event on the output of an event-based gateway. So I think what we'll do is we'll jump straight in and look at a mock-up that I've created to simulate the, the basic behavior of an event-based gateway. And then I'll look at a process that I've pulled together using Lucidchart, which may explain the scenario in a clearer way. Okay, so what we have here is a very simple configuration of an event-based gateway with three events attached to it, a message event, a timer event, and a conditional event. And we also have our friend the token, which will help us to simulate what happens to the token as it passes to the event-based gateway and onto the events. So let's get the token started. And by clicking the event-based gateway, it pulls the token towards it which effectively puts the events in standby in anticipation of any of the events occurring. So if I was to select any of these three events now, the token would be pulled to that event, effectively switching it on. This would render the other two intermediate events as disabled, and they wouldn't be able to respond to any events that may occur in this instance of the process. So I can reset this now and run through the same scenario, but for the other two events, the message event and the conditional event. So if I click the event based gateway here, that will bring the token to the gateway, switching on the intermediate events in anticipation of one of those events occurring. So on this occasion, it goes to the message intermediate event. And lastly, if I reset this again, I can bring the token to the event based gateway again by clicking the event based gateway which again switches on the intermediate events in anticipation of this last scenario where the token is pulled to the conditional intermediate event. So if we now look at the scenario that Chris was specifically asking about, which was the looping back from a timer event to the input again of the event-based gateway, I've pulled together an example using Lucidchart of how this might look. So again, we have a very simple configuration of an event-based gateway. And on this occasion, we have five intermediate events connected to it. One of the rules of an event-based gateway is that you can't attach a message line to it, whether that's coming into the gateway or going out. So I've illustrated that there on the diagram. An event-based gateway must have a sequence line on its input and obviously sequence lines coming from the event-based gateway connecting to the events. There are only five types of intermediate event that can be connected to an event-based gateway and I've shown these on the diagram here, which are the message event, the timer event, the conditional event, the signal event and the multiple event. And the multiple event can only assume the other four events. For each of the intermediate event types, it's acceptable to have as many as you like of each. You're not limited to just one of each. And you can just have two events connected to the event-based gateway. You could just have a message event and a timer event, for example. I just wanted to point out, even though it may be obvious, you can't connect an intermediate event directly to the gate or the output of an event-based gateway, or any gateway for that matter. It must be connected via a sequence line. This is of course different for boundary events which are connected to the boundary of the activity. So just a couple more syntax rules when it comes to event-based gateways. Instead of using a receive message event or a catching message event, it is acceptable to use a receive task. However, you can't mix the configuration on the same event-based gateway. If you've used a catching message event, you have to use message events. You can't use a catching message event and a receive task on the same gateway. 
Another point to note is that an event based gateway is only ever diverging, it's never converging. So you don't need another event based gateway to bring those sequence flows back together again. So let's now look at this useful technique of looping back from a timer event back to the input of the event based gateway. So in this scenario we're waiting for a customer to return an application form. So we have two events, we have the receive application form receive event and we also have a timer event that would trigger seven days after sending the form if the customer didn't return the form within the seven days after which you would send a reminder to the customer to return the form. So what we could do now is add a second event based gateway after the task where we sent the reminder to the customer and attached to that event based gateway we could have a second timer event where we wait a further seven days and if the form hasn't been returned after that seven days the application will be cancelled. And we could also have another receive task where we're receiving the application form from the customer. I'm just going to speed the video along so we can get to the first stage of where we want to be with this model. So you can see what we have here is still a simple configuration of an event based gateway with two events connected to it. We've got the receive event and the timer event. Connected to the timer event we've got the reminder that is sent to the customer if they haven't returned the application form within the seven days. And then after that we have another event based gateway to which are connected another timer event and another message receive event. If the timer event here is triggered this would lead to the application being cancelled. So as you've probably guessed by now if you're a regular to my YouTube channel this is all about me helping you with more efficient ways to model your processes using BPMN. So I'll remodel this process in a more efficient way and I'll just fast forward the video to a configuration that hopefully will be a little bit simpler. So what you can see in this configuration is that I've done away with the second event based gateway that I added and I've also done away with the second receive event that I added. So let's walk through this so you can understand this configuration. So we have the event based gateway as we've always had and when the token reaches the event based gateway there's only two possible events that could occur at this point. The customer could either return the application form or we could reach the seven days after the form has been sent. The timer event that's triggered seven days after the reminder has been sent can't possibly be triggered because we haven't sent the reminder yet. Once the catching timer event seven days after sending form has been triggered this then leads to the send reminder to customer task to be executed. The token now passes along the sequence line back to the input of the event based gateway. Now at this point there's only two possible ways that the token can go. It can either be passed to the message event receive application for from customer or the timer event seven days after reminder because the seven days after sending form timer event has already been triggered and the send reminder to customer has already been executed. So if the application form is not received within the seven days, then the token has no option other than to go to the timer event seven days after reminder. The token would then pass to the cancel application task and then onto the end event, and that would be the end of the process. I really hope that helps in giving you a bit more understanding of the behavior of an event based gateway and its characteristics. But if you've any questions you need to ask, just pop them in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.